Let me begin by introducing the presenter of the first paper, Lamb's a loss aware scheduler for multipath TCP over highly lossy networks. And the presenter is Ern Wan Dong from Tsinghua University, People's Republic of China. Um, so without further ado, can you please join me to welcome Ern Wan for his presentation. Professor, uh, for the very kind introduction. Uh, uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Enhuan Do uh, at Tsinghua University. Uh, and I spent uh, one year research visit at the University of Gottingen. Uh, this walk, uh, uh, this is a joint walk uh, with the supervisors, uh, Mingwei Xu uh, from Tsinghua University and Xiaomi Fu uh, from the University of Gottingen, and by my former colleague, Yisong. Uh, the title of the talk is Lens a uh, Loss Aware Scheduler for Multipath TCP over Highly Lossy Networks. Uh, here is the outline. Uh, first, uh, I would like to introduce the background and the motivation uh, to answer the question why do we need a new Multipath TCP scheduler? Uh, second, I will introduce our new proposal. Uh, lamps, uh, including uh, the basic idea, a uh, design, and the implementation. Third, I will introduce the evaluation part, uh, including test bed and the emulation experiments. Uh, finally, uh, I will conclude our paper. A recent measurement study shows that in the increasingly deployed high-speed uh, high rail case, uh, the packet loss rate of TCP flows rise sharply in urban areas. Uh, the table shows the uh, uh, probability that the packet loss rate is uh, higher than 20% or 30% uh, for a three minute TCP flow. Uh, in urban areas, uh, the TCP flows suffer very frequent handoffs in their study. In other existing study, uh, satellite internet communications uh, also suffer from very high packet loss rate caused by the rain attenuation. Uh, and fast moving ground vehicles uh, suffer from packet, uh, high packet loss rate when they are communicating to each other. Uh, to improve the low uh, data transmission efficiency and the low user experience uh, in, uh, such, uh, in such lossy environments, which are usually bursty, uh, Multipath TCP offers a solution. And an enhancement of TCP, it can, liberate, uh, it can liberate multiple parties for the transmission of a single data flow. And many researchers believe that it can uh, increase the uh, throughput and improve the robustness for the transmission. Uh, to, understand its, uh, to, to understand its performance in uh, highly lossy networks, uh, we conduct some tests. Uh, before the test, uh, I would like to introduce the scheduling of MPTCP first. A scheduler uh, in MPTCP uh, is used to distribute segments among all subflows, and usually uh, a subflow runs on one path. The subflows send the scheduled segments respectively, and it is worth to note that the scheduler is different from the content control algorithm. Uh, in MPTCP, each subflow has its own congestion window, and the sizes of these windows are controlled by, uh, are managed by uh, one unified MPTCP congestion control algorithm. Uh, the scheduler is only related to the uh, segment distribution or the packet distribution, not related to the uh, congestion control window. Uh, in the implementation of MPTCP, it has three uh, different schedulers. The first one is called, uh, uh, the default one is called low RTT, which sends segments on the subflow with lowest RTT. And the second one is called redundant. It redundantly sends the segments over all subflows. And the, the third one is called round robin. It picks one subflow after the other circular. And all of these scatterers only assign the segments to the subflows uh, with free window space. 
uh, in our test, we consider the scenario shown in the left figure. Uh, to emulate it, we build a test bed which, which consists of four PCs. And we consider two types of traffic in our test, uh, constant bit rate traffic and the bug traffic. Uh, and the traffic is transmitted by one uh, MPTCP flow, uh, which has two subflows uh, running through the two passes respectively. The constant bit rate traffic is uh, generated by a dummy application, uh, and the bug traffic is generated by an iPerf. Uh, we regard the constant bit rate traffic as a simplest uh, video traffic to simplify our analysis of the results. Uh, first, we focus on the constant bit rate traffic. The link parameters are shown in this slide. The link one is set to 200 millisecond RTD and 2% packet loss rate, and the link two is set to 100 millisecond RTD and the packet loss rate is uh, changed from 5% to 30% in six different cases. The left figure shows the results. Uh, uh, it shows the uh, data block mean delay uh, for, the di uh, for the different schedulers. Uh, uh, it shows that the redundant scheduler achieves the uh, best uh, application delay uh, because of its redundant uh, uh, sending. Uh, and the uh, low RTT uh, can be worse than round robin when the packet loss rate of pass two uh, increases. Uh, we think the reason is that low RTT regard the RTT as the only value to select uh, the pass, uh, uh, and it ignores a very important fact that a uh, loss packet needs at least uh, one RTT to recover. So uh, if the a scheduler uh, chooses the path with the lowest RTD but the high packet loss rate, the application still suffers high delay. Uh, the right figure shows the range active packet, uh, shows the ratio between the range active packets and the packet sent by the application. Uh, we can find that the redundant scheduler uh, greatly increased the ratio uh, because of its uh, re repeated scheduling. And uh, we can also find that uh, uh, the ratio of redundant scheduler is decreasing when the packet loss rate of pass two increases. Uh, this is because the congestion window of the uh, uh, subflow two uh, shrinks, uh, 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 shrinks by the uh, congestion control algorithm when the packet loss rate of pass two increases. Uh, Next, uh, we focus on the bug traffic, and the link parameters is shown in the table. And we change the packet loss rate of bus to every 10 seconds. Uh, the figure shows the mean good put that the MPCTP flow gets uh, for different scatterers. And we find the, uh, from the result, we find that the redundant scatterer can only use the pass from, uh, can only use the bandwidth from one pass and it cannot use the bandwidth from multiple passes. Comparing the low RT and round robin scalars, we can find significant difference. Uh, we think the reason is that in bug data traffic, uh, the scaling of the low RT and round robin uh, is uh, because, uh, because the windows are always filled, uh, so the scheduling of the low RT and round robin is actually controlled by the arrival of acknowledgments. So we think it is hard for the uh, schedulers to benefit uh, the bug data tra transport. Uh, we think a scheduler uh, that can increase uh, that increases performance for one scenario but is less effective than others in other scenarios is not very useful. So we think the existing schedulers do not work well in highly loading networks. Then we set uh, the, our new, uh, the design goals of our new scheduler. In highly lossy networks, especially the networks with worthy losses, compared to the default scheduler, uh, we hope our new scheduler should uh, increase the performance for video streaming traffic, and it shouldn't decrease the uh, performance for other traffic. 
And compared to the redundant scheduler, it should achieve similar application delay uh, and uh, reduces the extra battery consumption largely. And when the petty loss uh, rate is low, uh, it should degrade to the default scheduler. Uh, we start our design from analyzing uh, why the existing schedulers do not uh, have poor performance in highly lossy networks. First, since the a uh, default scheduler low RTT can be worse than round robin. We think it is not a good idea to only consider the RTT as the uh, only value to uh, judge passes, and uh, the packet loss rate should also be considered in the uh, in the selecting process. And second, the packet redundancy thinning is very helpful for the application delay, but it can also uh, lead uh, lead to. Uh, a more uh, bandwidth consumption. So we think uh, the usage of it should be limited to uh, some very extreme situations. Uh, then we design our new proposal lamps. Uh, here, is, here is the work process of it. When a scheduler is triggered, it has two tasks to do. Uh, the first is to, uh, it has to select a subflow, and the second, it has to choose a packet to send on this subflow. Uh, LAMPS uh, select a subflow based on the results from the past quality assessment module uh, and uh, according to the uh, subflow's property, uh, it sets the uh, subflow state and uh, uh, it cho after that it chooses the packet to be sent on this subflow based on the subflow state. I will introduce the past quality assessment module first and then I will introduce how the uh, LAMPS chooses the, the package. Uh, LAMPS uh, selects a, a subflow based on the past, pro, uh, the past quality of that module. Uh, we define the transfer time at the time uh, between the first sending time and the final receiving time for a segment. And we model the transfer time for uh, all the subflows. And LAMPS selects the subflow with lowest transfer time. Uh, in our model, we consider both RTD and packet loss rate both. The symbol table is shown in this slide, but I do not want to get involved into the details. Uh, briefly speaking, uh, we first model the transfer time in theory based on the probability theory. And we, uh, and we find that uh, our results can't be directly implemented in practice. Um, some variables uh, need to be estimated dynamically and uh, approximately. And then we deduce another formula to approximately estimate the uh, transfer time. Uh, I only show the result here, the details are in our paper. Uh, and the lamps to uh, select the subflow with lowest transfer time. And, and uh, after that, we define uh, two states of the subflows, a uh, normal and redundant. If the selected subflow is in normal state, uh, we, uh, the lamp chooses the first packet that has never sent by any subflow. And if the selected uh, subflow is in redundant state, uh, it chooses the first packet that has never been sent on this subflow, uh, which means that uh, the packet uh, can uh, maybe sent by other subflow before and the stage switching condition is configurable in our implementation. Uh, we uh, set it to, uh, if packet loss rate is larger than 5%, uh, the selected subflow uh, changes the state from normal to redundant, and vice versa in our experiments. We have implemented our proposal uh, in MPTCP, which is based on Linux kernel uh, 3.18, and the uh, code is available on and now. Uh, we use the uh, same test bed to evaluate our proposal. First, we focus on the application delay for constant bit rate traffic. The left uh, table shows the, uh, the link parameters, and we change the uh, packet loss rate of past two uh, every 10 seconds and the right figure shows the results. From the results, we find that uh, our uh, proposal improves the application delay by about 31% and about 27% for different loss in physics. 
uh, and it uh, achieve a similar performance uh, as a redundant scheduler. Uh, at the meantime, it reduces about uh, 18 times the actual bandwidth consumption compared with uh, the redundant scheduler. Uh, next, we will do the experiment uh, in the test part for bug traffic. Uh, we find that our new proposal uh, doesn't decrease the throughput and uh, you can reduce uh, you can reduce about uh, 12 times uh, extra bandwidth consumption compared with the redundant scheduler uh, at the same time uh, the redundant scheduler cannot liberate the bandwidth for multiple passes uh, since the majority of video streaming traffic today is uh, http uh, adaptive bitrate streaming uh, we evaluate the next performance with a real uh, application. We set up uh, Apache 2 server to provide dynamic adaptive streaming over HTTP, uh, which is the standard of the video streaming. And uh, we use the MP4 client as the receiver to stream the video. The link parameters are shown in our paper. Uh, we analyze the log file from MP4 client and the TCP dump. The result shows that uh, lamps and redundant scheduler take less uh, memory than uh, low RTD and run Robin. Uh, we, uh, we think the reason that uh, for low RTD and run Robin, run scheduling leads to uh, more auto order deliveries, uh, resulting in uh, headline blocking problems, uh, which increases the memory usage. Uh, and that achieves a similar performance with redundant scheduler. Uh, it, it reduces the range jack packet ratio by 25% because it only sends the redundant packet uh, when the uh, state, uh, when the selected subflow state is in a redundant state. Uh, to further understand the performance of uh, all of the lamps, we uh, conduct uh, more evaluation uh, emulations. Uh, please find the details in our paper. Uh, in our paper, uh, we found that the existing MPTCP scatterers do not work well in highly loaded networks, and the LAMPs, our new proposal, incurs the advantage of existing scatterers, and at the same time, it attempts to overcome their shortcomings. Uh, from the experiments, we find that uh, it can significantly improve uh, application delay when there is at least one pass has more than 10 percent packet loss rate compared to the default scheduler of MPTCP now. And in the future, uh, we would like to work on these three uh, open issues. First, uh, we want to build a better analy analytical modeling to understand the app's performance. Uh, and uh, second, uh, we, we plan to study the in uh, the uh, how the scattering of MBTCP interacts with the uh, congestion control algorithm. And third, uh, we will compare our scatterer with more uh, scatterers. Uh, the all, all the existing uh, all the scatterers compared in our paper are implemented in the MBTCP now. But in recent about two years, some researchers have proposed other scatterers. Uh, and they are not included in the uh, implementation now, but in the future we would like to compare our scalar with them uh, in the highly loading network. And uh, that's all. Thanks for your attention. First is if you look at your um, figures, you always have these big hills and these small valleys, right? Can you explain once again where they come from? Uh, second question is uh, the plots we see look quite close together. Can you comment on the significance of the differences? And the third one is 
Um, one of the main design features of multipass TCP is that the multiple flows do not show worse behavior than the single flow. Um, I'm missing the single flow so that you just show using the best capacity link. So how much is the difference of multipass TCP against single TCP? Thank you. Thank you for the uh, questions. Uh, I So you, uh, which figure, which figure you think uh, is is questionable? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, this figure you're showing right now. So yeah. you have some hills and some valleys, right? Yeah, where, yeah. Where do they come from? Where do they come from? Uh, we uh, uh, this uh, this is the good uh, the mean good put of uh, MPTCP flow in our. Uh, in our experiments, uh, I have introduced the test we we set here, uh, and uh, and the, uh, the results are, are from the good fruit of the MPTCP flow, and the way we record the bad uh, bad way uh, we record is speed, is speed uh, for every uh, one second, and we plot these figures. Yes, I understand. Showing good put over time, but what's happening? At the valley. So when when you have a low when you have a low good put, where does it come from? Oh, uh, the low good put uh, is from uh, we, uh, because we set the uh, packet loss rate of pass to every uh, ten seconds, and uh, when it is very high, uh, the good put uh, will decrease it. Yes. yes. And uh, uh, sorry, I forgot your questions. <laughs> Uh, so how many replications have you done? Are the results significant? Uh, so can you comment on the significance of the differences? Significant differences? Uh, for the uh, bug traffic, uh, our proposal uh, can, uh, can still liberate the bandwidth from uh, in multiple passes. And uh, uh, for the constant feature traffic, uh, our proposal our proposal uh, achieves a similar performance with the uh, uh, redundant scanner, which is uh, uh, the best one in, in the current existing scanners. Thank you. Um, do we have any more questions or comments for the presenter? Please raise your hand. So I have a very quick question about your modeling of the uh, compression time or the transfer of time, right? Uh, do you do it uh, actively in monitoring by monitoring the, uh, all the passes in the network, or you already know the parameters that you are using for the model? Uh, uh, we use the uh, information from the uh, uh, MPTCP subflows uh, which are like uh, the TCP flows, uh, the, they can have the information about the RTT, yeah. and uh, we uh, we built a uh, we, we designed a method to estimate the packet loss rate on each uh, subflow, and we use this information to model the transfer time. So how do you estimate? The, I mean, because you know uh, you need uh, an active estimation of both ratio on uh, each path so, uh, before you make the decision of uh, assembling the packets. So how much time you, you need before you know, collecting the samples and you know, sending the packets? Or, you know, oh, uh, this is a good question. Because uh, uh, you say it's highly low significance, so <laughs> yeah, variation yeah. in the uh, loss ratio can be, you know, we, we actually, uh, actually, in our model, we use the uh, data from uh, not the RTT, uh -huh. yeah, uh, the information from the the recent RTT, the most recent RTT. So you take only one sample uh, as an indication of uh, or you average. Or yes, uh, because uh, we consider the scenario uh, maybe it has a quite bursty losses, mm -hmm. so we use the the, the last RTT. The information from last hour. 
Do you think that is accurate enough or, or estimating the quality of your uh, uh, Sorry? Do you, do you think that is accurate enough? Or, or? Uh, yeah, uh, it's, it's the, uh, it has the best uh, performance in our experiments. We have time for one more quick question. So, uh, thank you for the presentation. I, I think it is related to the previous question, actually. Uh, for, for measuring these quantities, do you have a, a, a measurement phase and then a phase where you actually use it in, in your scheduler? Or do you do this on the go? Uh, do you, have a, do, you have, do you have a separate phase to calibrate these parameters? Um, sorry, uh, we, uh, we, we just uh, uh, collect the information when, when the flow is running. Uh, so you do, it, you do it on the go? Yeah, yeah, I do it on the go. Okay, thank you. I think we still have time for your question. You had a question? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, kind of in the same area. Uh, you said you switch between these two schemes, this random land and the other schemes. And you said you do it if you have like 5% packet loss. Yes. Um, is that like a, a hard point at 5%? Did you elevate what happens above it or below it? So why do you choose 5%? Uh, that is a good question. Uh, uh, actually, uh, because we find that uh, the uh, the reports of the reports of the high load networks uh, uh, in their in this measurement studies, usually uh, the high uh, load rate is larger than five percent. Uh, and actually, this is a, is an open issue uh, for now. And we set it, set it in our experiments, and we uh, we found that it worked well. So uh, so we set it to five percent. Actually, in our implementation, this this is uh, is configurable in our, in our implementation. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I think we'll move on to the second presentation. But let's thank the presenter for his presentation. Thank you.